His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa chaired this evening the opening ceremony of the Gulf Cooperation Council's 37th Supreme Council Summit at Sakhir Palace. The summit was held with the participation of Their Majesties and Their Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries and their accompanying delegations. The session started with a recitation from the Holy Quran. تصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته And then His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Khalifa delivered the following speech. Your Highnesses and Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, may Allah's blessing, mercy and blessings be upon you all. Today, with Allah's blessings, we announce the opening of the 37th session of the Supreme Council for the Arab Gulf Cooperation Council. We would like to welcome you all to Bahrain, our deepest gratitude towards you and as an expression of the happiness of the people of Bahrain for this meeting and as an expression of the fraternal relations between all of us, we also would like to express our deepest gratitude to our brother, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for all his efforts to boost 
the Council's march during his presidency of the previous summit held, held in our beloved Riyadh. It has contributed clearly in the development of our uh, vision towards the next phase. We appreciate also the efforts of all, our, uh, all, all GCC leaders and their efforts, sincere efforts, to, to establish the foundations of this uh, council and which expresses the common interests of our people and our future. Your Highnesses and uh, Your Majesties and Excellency, to, uh, our meeting today comes under unprecedented uh, uh, circumstances which the whole world is uh, going through. This requires the highest degree of cooperation and integration in order to continue our success and its role uh, in contributing to the international community, the, uh, the GCC Council, what it has achieved so far, the integration, it has been achieved so far, it doesn't only uh, emphasize the gains of its people, it has become also a regional edifice which works on establishing the uh, security of the international world through uh, promo, uh, creating uh, uh, agreements that would protect uh, uh, countries in the region and also to prevent the interference, uh, foreign interference in its uh, internal affairs. We are happy uh, to announce that we will continue, uh, that we are continuing our economic cooperation and the achievements which has uh, in promoting the prosperity of its people and establish it, the common, uh, the joint effort, uh, the establishment of the, uh, the economic uh, committee comes as an, is an expression of a mechanism which will create a development a unity uh, so that it becomes a, 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 a greater economic block at the level of the world based on productivity, competitiveness and sustainable growth and what also we would like also to praise uh, the projects, the agreements, economic agreements, and uh, the most important of which is the establishment of the joint market and the projects uh, will it, uh, in electricity and the water and our uh, work towards uh, uh, joint customs or work in the field of transportation. And, uh, such as uh, trains and, uh, and uh, bridges in order to uh, achieve a more comprehensive development, which is, which is one of the main uh, priorities on the agenda of this summit in order to among all of us, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, it, it has become clear day after day that, uh, uh, that uh, security and development uh, uh, cannot be separated and our efforts to enhance uh, security agreements in order to, uh, um, to in combat all kinds of terrorism is the only way to protect our countries and our citizens and our gains. Uh, the, the, the security exercise which was held in Bahrain last month with the participation of security forces from all uh, uh, Gulf countries has been uh, uh, a step towards more security cooperation between our countries. It has, uh, it has, uh, it has proven uh, it, it came, it was highly organized and took into consideration the threats which uh, are uh, surrounding our countries. 
the, our abilities to, to combat terrorism uh, with God's blessings and because of your uh, uh, wise leadership and your continuous attempt to, uh, to uh, combat terrorism, your persistence was the reason behind the prosperity and development which other countries which other countries have followed have adopted uh, finally I would like to also express my appreciation to, uh, uh, to Mr. Uh, Dr. Abdel Latib Rashid Zayani, the Secretary General, and, all, and his aides and staff. For their uh, role in promoting uh, the role of the ZCC and following up on the decisions of, uh, of its meetings, we welcome you again in Bahrain, your second home. And we hope, and we, hope we succeed that our blessed march will achieve more, uh, more uh, prosperity to our countries and and more development. Peace and God's mercy and blessings be upon you. Then the custodian of the two holy mosques addressed the ceremony. The speech goes now to the... Uh, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. All praise be to Allah. And peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his kin and kith. Your Royal Highness, Brother King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, the King of the Kingdom of Bahrain, my brothers, your Highnesses, peace be with all of you. It gives me great pleasure at the beginning of this summit to extend my thanking and gratitude to my uh, brother, the King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, and to the people of Bahrain and government of Bahrain, uh, uh, my appreciation and gratitude because of what we have received from hospitality and good reception. Wishing my brother, King Hamad, all success in uh, chairing and heading the, F the, the activities of this, uh, uh, of this edition, expressing my relief to all what we have received from the security. And of course, we are going to uh, support each other to promote the cooperation level. And this will be including the decision of uh, the decision of the Economic and Developmental Affairs uh, Committee in order to maintain the joint work from the economic and developmental sides. Uh, uh, my colleagues, it's not a secret that uh, what uh, we are going through in our region from dis uh, from disturbances, uh, 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 this requires all of us to work together and to work under the soul of responsibility and to exert more efforts to establish the prosperity for our region and for our countries. The fact is very difficult, especially what we are living here in the Arab countries from terrorism and internal conflicts and shedding bloods. And this requires all of us to work together against the foreign interventions because this destabilizes security in our countries. As for the uh, uh, situation in uh, Yemen, we are still exerting a lot of efforts to eliminate the conflict there to achieve for Yemen the security and prosperity under the leadership of a legitimate government under the initiative of the Gulf, uh, uh, Gulf countries. And according to the uh, Security uh, uh, Council uh, Resolution number 16, 
praising the UN uh, efforts. And in Syria, of course, we are not happy with what we have in Syria and what is uh, going on to the, uh, the Syrian people from displacement. So this requires all of us and the international community to exert a lot of efforts to stop shedding, uh, shedding bloods and to reach to political solution to achieve prosperity and security for the Syrian people and for the Syrian country. Uh, my colleagues, although what we have achieved from important achievements, but we are looking forward to a, a better future for the uh, Gulf people, for more, for more uh, prosperity and more security, and to promote, of course, the march of the uh, Council. Uh, uh, much of the Council internationally and regionally, and also to achieve the security and prosperity for the whole region, uh, supporting the international security. In conclusion, I'd like for my brother, King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, all success during his chairmanship of this edition activities. And peace be with all of you. For his part, the Emir of Kuwait delivered the following speech. And now I would like to welcome uh, His Highness Sheikh Sabah al Ahjabir Sabah. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to Allah and peace be upon His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad, and his family and companions. Your Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Your Highness. Uh, your Majesties and Highnesses, uh, uh, the Mr. Uh, the uh, Secretary General of the GCC, uh, Dr. Abdul Latif Rashid Zayani, your Highnesses and Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may Allah mercy and blessings be blessing upon you all. I would like first to thank. Uh, to I would like to. Uh, to, uh, to express my condolences over the uh, passing away of Sheikh uh, Ahmed bin Khalifa, uh, and and I, uh, to recall his achievements. Uh, uh, his role in uh, in, pa in the foundation of uh, the GCC countries. I would like also to also extend my thanks to my brother, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and his government and the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain for uh, their uh, generosity and, kind, uh, and kindness and, uh, uh, and their role in the preparation, preparation for this meeting. And we are sure that, uh, that, that the Kingdom's Bahrain uh, uh, presiding over the summit will add to the to our blessed march i would also like to express my uh, thanks to uh, to uh, to uh, to the um, to the custodian of the two holy mosques king salman bin abdul aziz al saud of the kingdom of saudi arabia for all his efforts for all, uh, for his uh, sincere efforts uh, during his presidency of uh, the previous summit uh, held in our beloved which contributed to the to uh, which contributed to our uh, achievements uh, your majesties and highnesses uh, this uh, meeting this summit uh, is held in our beloved uh, country and uh, 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 under uh, very turbulent uh, situations and difficult uh, which require there is more coordination in order to study the effect of these acts so we could protect our countries. Uh, our Gulf uh, uh, March and what has been achieved uh, so far, we have managed to, uh, to fulfill the aspirations and hopes of our citizens in, uh, to achieve uh, Gulf citizenship and to bring about a lot of economic, uh, economic and political benefits. These achievements required, uh, uh, these achievements require that we uh, also investigate what, uh, what more can be done uh, to add uh, more benefits to our people. 
I may now remember, recall the vision of his uh, of the custodian of the two holy mosques and uh, about uh, the achievements of the council and what has been achieved, especially after the establishment of the Economic and Development uh, Affairs Authority, which symbolizes uh, an implementation of our cooperation. Uh, your Excellencies and high Highnesses, uh, when we look at uh, the uh, the situation in uh, in our area, it's, uh, it seems to emphasize that we are undergoing a lot of turbulences and difficulties. Uh, if, uh, uh, when it comes to the economic, uh, uh, to the economy, we are all suffering from the drop in oil prices, which affected our countries and created negative uh, effects on our societies. This required that we review uh, the policies we implement in our countries. It also require uh, to also review our relationship with other countries when it comes to cooperation in order to implement, uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to benefit uh, our countries and on, uh, to, to be able to achieve the, uh, the developments we, uh, we need. We also encounter a lot, uh, we, we also uh, encounter terrorism, which um, affects uh, the stability and the safety of uh, our, our citizens and affects the world as a whole. This requires that we redouble our efforts in order to encounter uh, the difficulties and to work with our allies, your excellencies and highnesses. Uh, my country, uh, for more than three months, has hosted uh, negotiations among the different sides uh, in Yemen, and we have exerted uh, efforts in order to help them reach an agreement which would lead to a political solution to the problem to protect, to, uh, to protect uh, the sovereignty of, uh, uh, of uh, and legitimacy of Yemen, we have unfortunately uh, 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 failed in doing that, and uh, the conflict is still ongoing. And we call upon, uh, we call upon, upon. Uh, uh, we, uh, we express our condemnation to uh, a uh, Houthi, uh, uh, Houthi group and Ali Abdullah Saleh targeting. As for Syria, we feel in a lot of pain for the continuous suffering of the Syrian people. We emphasize the efforts to, uh, exerted to reach a political solution to uh, stop the bloodshed of the Syrian people and protect uh, uh, and unity of uh, of Syria. As for Iraq, we express our uh, we express our relief towards what has been achieved in uh, in, fi in combating ISIS, and we hope. Uh, to achieve uh, a reconciliation, national reconciliation between uh, everyone in, in Iraq. As for the Palestinian cause, we, we feel sorry for all for, uh, we feel sorry for what prevents achieving peace in, uh, in Palestine, especially the terrorist attacks of Israel and the world's uh, the world being busy in other in other issues, we we believe that that uh, the international community should uh, should. Uh, should convince uh, Israel to, uh, to to work towards peace and to establish the Palestinian uh, uh, state with East Jerusalem as its capital. As for Iran, we are aware of the importance of having a, a, a dialogue between us and uh, GCC countries and the, and Iran. We, we believe this uh, this dialogue requires for it to be successful. It has to be based on international law which organizes uh, which regulates relations between countries uh, 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 and which requires a, a respect uh, for uh, the legitimacy uh, and so, uh, sovereignty of countries we have uh, finally we have uh, an agenda full of items uh, 
we hope we will be able to um, we hope we will be able to implement uh, the items on the agenda and i'd like to thank you all and thank the general uh, the secretary general um, for all their efforts and i hope our summit will be successful and may allah be a peace a mercy and blessings be upon you all thank you very much Thank you. And Your GCC Highness. Secretary General Dr. Abdelatif Al Zayani also addressed the gathering. Uh, thank you, Your Highness. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad. And his your Royal Highness, King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, King the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Chairman of the current edition of the Council, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, peace be with all of you. It gives me great pleasure. To extend to your Royal Highness, may Allah be with you, my gratitude and thanks for uh, hearing the current edition of the Council. And we are uh, pretty sure that the chairmanship of the Kingdom of Bahrain, under your directives and your wise leadership, achieving uh, hopefully the uh, main objectives that you. Uh, your Ila Highnesses and Excellencies are aspiring to achieve in order to achieve the aspirations of the uh, uh, Council's people for more integration and linking. And gives me the pleasure also to extend my thank and gratitude and congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdelaziz al Saudi, King of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. May Allah be with you. For what you have exerted from efforts in the 36th edition of the Council, from wisdom and good sight, and, for, and also I'd like to extend my thanking to the ministers uh, during a whole year from efforts of uh, chairing and heading the ministerial committees and technical committees, the different ones, and what, were, what they have achieved to enrich the activities of uh, such committees has been reflected, have been reflected uh, positively to promote the march of the Council. And it gives me a great pleasure also to extend my uh, thanking and to, uh, to the people of the Council and to all of you on the occasion of of the celebrations of uh, each of uh, Sultanate of Oman, uh, the United Arab Emirates, and the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the State of Qatar for their uh, national anniversary, uh, wishing the Almighty to protect our country's uh, security and prosperity. Your High your Royal Highnesses and Your Highnesses, it gives me great pleasure on this occasion to emphasize that what is uh, issued from your, from your Council in order to promote the integration in all the, the entire works of the joint work and to promote also the joint coordination with our neighboring countries and, and, sister, and sister, neither country and sister countries. We are going to follow up on this by the uh, ministerial committees and technical committees implementing your uh, wise directives. What you are uh, 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 giving from uh, keenness and importance to the joint work and your preservance to achieve the prosperities and the aspirations of the Council's people uh, have been reflected in your under the directives and your uh, resolutions and decisions uh, ended by establishing the Economic Affairs Committee and the Judicial Affairs Committee. And by this you are emphasizing that by this gathering is going to uh, uh, achieve a lot of efforts in order to have a complete unity and to achieve the economic unity in a stable and a stable environment, a prosperous environment, and sustainable environment. The Ministerial Council has completed in, uh, last, in its last edition discussing all the uh, works and reports and activities and raised and reported and raised what they have achieved from uh, what they have concluded.
leave it to, to your council to issue the proper decisions. I ask the Almighty to uh, give us all success in our, uh, in our meeting and to uh, be with all of you and to bless us in, the, uh, in our countries by the prosperity and security. And peace be with all of you. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Khalifa chaired the first closed session of the 37th GCC Supreme Council Summit, where their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, discussed issues and topics on the summit's agenda. His Majesty the King held a dinner banquet in honour of their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, and British Prime Minister Theresa May. The banquet was held at Secure Palace this evening, marking the inauguration of the 37th GCC Supreme Council Summit. Earlier today, His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, upon his arrival to head his country's delegation at the 37th GCC Summit, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, were also present, alongside senior royals, the Shura and Representatives Council's Chairman, the Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC Secretary General, Ministers, Saudi Arabia's Ambassador to Bahrain, Bahrain's Ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Governor of the Southern Governorate, BDF, Interior Ministry and National Guard senior officers, and members of Saudi Arabia's embassy in Bahrain. After a short break at the Royal Protocols Hall at Sikir Air Base, during which His Majesty and the custodian of the two holy mosques exchanged amicable conversation regarding the strong fraternal relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and their brotherly peoples, the motorcade of the custodian of the two holy mosques departed to his place of residence at Sikir Palace. The honour mission was led by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa. The custodian of the two holy mosques is accompanied by a high-level delegation.
His Majesty the King then received the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, upon his arrival heading his country's delegation for the 37th GCC summit hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, were also present, alongside senior royals, the Shura and Representatives Council speakers, the GCC Secretary General, ministers, Kuwait's Ambassador to Bahrain, Bahrain's Ambassador to Kuwait, the Governor of the Southern Governorate, BDF, Interior Ministry and National Guard senior officers, and members of Kuwait's Embassy in Bahrain. After a short break at the Royal Protocols Hall at Sikir Air Base, during which His Majesty and His Highness the Emir of Kuwait exchanged amicable conversation regarding the strong fraternal relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Kuwait and their brotherly peoples, the motorcade of His Highness departed to his place of residence at Sikir Palace. The honour mission was led by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The delegation accompanying the Emir of Kuwait to the summit comprises the First Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs Minister Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamid Al Sabah, the Deputy Prime Minister and Interior Minister Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid Al Hamid Al Sabah, the Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Sheikh Khalid Al Jarrah Al Sabah, the Deputy Premier and Acting Minister of Finance and Oil Anas Khalid Al Saleh, Head of His Highness the Emir's Office Ahmed Fahad Al Fahad, Emiri Diwan Advisor Mohammed Abul Hassan, Head of Emiri Protocols Sheikh Khalid Al Abdullah Al Sabah Al Nasser Al Sabah, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Khalid Al Jarala. Head of Amiri Diwan Media and Cultural Affairs, Yusuf Hamad Al Rumi, Head of Amiri Diwan Political and Economic Affairs, Fawaz Saud Nasser Al Sabah, Assistant to Foreign Minister in Charge of the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Nasser Al Mohammed Al Sabah, and other senior officials in the Amiri Diwan and the Foreign Ministry.
and His Majesty the King received the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid Al Thani, upon his arrival, heading his country's delegation to participate in the 37th GCC summit, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, were also present, alongside senior royals, the Shura and Council Representatives Chairman, the GCC Secretary General, Ministers, Qatar's Ambassador to Bahrain, Bahrain's Embassy Charge d'Affaires to Qatar, the Governor of the Southern Governorate, BDF Interior Ministry and National Guard senior officers, and members of Qatar's Embassy in Bahrain. After a short break at the Royal Protocols Hall at Sakir Air Base, during which His Majesty the King and His Highness the Emir of Qatar exchanged amicable conversation regarding the strong fraternal relations between Bahrain and Qatar and their brotherly peoples, the motorcade of His Highness departed to his place of residence at Sakir Palace. The honour mission was led by Finance Minister Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The Emir of Qatar made a statement in which he greeted His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain, wishing them success and the Kingdom further progress. He also greeted Their Majesties and Their Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, expressing hope that the summit will contribute to fulfilling the desired aims of enhancing security and stability in the region. The Emir of Qatar is accompanied by his personal representative, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamid Al Thani, and by an official delegation. His Majesty the King also received UAE's Vice President and Prime Minister, the ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, upon his arrival to lead his country's delegation to participate in the 37th GCC summit, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, were also present, alongside senior royals, the Shura and Representative Council speakers, the GCC Secretary-General, Ministers, the UAE's Ambassador to Bahrain, Bahrain's Ambassador to the UAE, the Governor of the Southern Governorate, BDF Interior Ministry and National Guard Senior Officers, and members of the UAE's Embassy in Bahrain. After a short break at the Royal Protocols Hall at Sakir Air Base, during which His Majesty the King and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum exchanged amicable conversation regarding the strong fraternal relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the UAE and their brotherly peoples, the motorcade of His Highness departed to his place of residence at Sakir Palace. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum was accompanied by UAE Deputy Premier and Interior Minister Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, UAE Foreign Minister His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Chairman of the Dubai Civil Aviation Department Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, UAE Minister of Cabinet Affairs and the Future Mohammed Abdullah Al Khairouqai, UAE Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Dr. Anwar bin Mohammed Karkash, Cabinet Member and Minister of State for Financial Affairs, Obaid bin Mohammed Al Tayyar, Cabinet Member and Minister of State for International Cooperation, Reem bint Ibrahim Al Hashimi, Director General of the His Highness's The Ruler's Court, Mohammed Ibrahim Al Shebani, Director General of the Dubai Protocol and Hospitality Department, Khalifa Saeed Saleman, and the UAE's Ambassador to the Kingdom, Abdullah Mahmoud Khouri. The honour mission was led by Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa.
Then His Majesty the King received the Deputy Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers Affairs of the Sultanate of Oman, His Highness Sayyid Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Sayyid, upon his arrival on behalf of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Sayyid of Oman to the Kingdom of Bahrain, heading his country's delegation for the 37th GCC Summit, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, were also present, alongside senior royals, the Shura and Representative Council Speakers, the GCC Secretary General, Ministers, the Ambassador of Oman to Bahrain, Bahrain's Embassy's Acting Charge d'Affaires to Oman, the Governor of the Southern Governorate, BDF Interior Ministry and National Guard Senior Officers, and members of Oman's Embassy in Bahrain. After a short break at the Royal Protocols Hall at Sakir Air Base, during which His Majesty the King and His Highness Syed Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Said exchanged amicable conversations regarding the strong fraternal relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Sultanate of Oman and their brotherly people, the motorcade of His Highness departed to his place of residence at Sakir Palace. The honor mission was led by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The official delegation accompanying the Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers Affairs to the Sultanate of Oman includes Minister of Foreign Affairs Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, Minister of Oil and Gas Dr. Mohammed bin Hamid Al Rumi, Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Dr. Fouad bin Jafar Al Sajwani, and a number of state officials. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued a circular today specifying the public holiday marking the birthday of Prophet Muhammad. 
The Kingdom's ministries, directorates and public institutions will be closed on Sunday, December 11th, corresponding to 12 Rabia al-Awal, 1438 Hijri. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, affirmed the importance of the visit of British Prime Minister and Member of Parliament Theresa May to attend the 37th GCC Summit as a guest of honour, which embodies the strength and the historic nature of the strategic relationship between Bahrain and the UK and the GCC countries. His Royal Highness welcomed the British Prime Minister at her residence today in the presence of Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The Crown Prince noted their keenness to strengthen the solid fundamentals that have underpinned the bilateral relations between the two kingdoms for more than 200 years. His Royal Highness said the joint courses of action with the UK are filled with opportunities and possibilities in economic fields, in addition to strategic and security aspects, which reinforce continuous vital communication and mutual visits on higher levels, which result in cooperation and coordination on various levels. His Royal Highness also highlighted that the two kingdoms share the same vision regarding various strategic issues, which has allowed them to work on a wide scale and establish more opportunities for development in the interest of both friendly countries. The meeting reviewed the bilateral relations between the two kingdoms and issues of regional and common interest. PDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received today at the Hid Naval Base the UK's Prime Minister Theresa May in the presence of Chief of Staff Dia bin Sagar Al Naimi, the Commander of the Bahrain Royal Naval Force Sheikh Khalifa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and senior BDF officials. The BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the deep bilateral historic relations and the strong cooperation in all fields, especially in the military field. The meeting also included discussions on topics of common interest. The two sides then exchanged commemorative gifts. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, received today at his residential headquarters at Sikir Palace, British Prime Minister Theresa May. Their meeting tackled bilateral relations and fields of cooperation, in addition to means of boosting them. The two sides also discussed the latest regional developments. The delegation accompanying the custodian of the two holy mosques was also present. His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah al Jabbar al Ahmed al Sabah, received today at his residential headquarters at Sikir Palace British Prime Minister Theresa May. The meeting tackled bilateral relations in all fields, which reflects the deep rooted ties between the two friendly countries and their people. They also discussed issues of mutual concern and the latest regional and international developments. British Prime Minister Theresa May delivered a speech during her visit to the Royal Bahrain Naval Force in which she highlighted the strategic Bahraini-British relations and the force's role in strengthening these diplomatic ties. The British Prime Minister stressed the UK's support to the GCC countries to maintain their security and stability, affirming continued cooperation with the GCC in the fields of security and defence. She said that the Royal Bahraini Naval Forces contribute to achieving the vision of the UK, which is linked to maintaining the Gulf security adding that including the Royal Naval Force in the Arab coalition to fight ISIS reflects the force's competence and capability. She added that the force plays a vital role in enhancing maritime security and preserving it against maritime privacy and illicit trade, protecting trade flow, which is crucial for energy market stability. British Prime Minister Theresa May paid a visit to Rifah Fort today, where she expressed pleasure at visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain and meeting a number of distinguished young Bahrainis. 
In a speech during the visit, she said that such talent will contribute to the prosperity of relations between the two countries, noting that this year crowns 200 years of bilateral relations, which officially began in 1816, following the signing of agreements for long-lasting friendship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom. She asserted that the two countries have worked together in a number of areas and that she looks forward to strengthening relations between the two countries at all levels. For his part, the governor of the southern region, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, welcomed the British Prime Minister and her accompanying delegation, saying that the visit comes at a particularly important time. He highlighted numerous aspects of mutually beneficial cooperation between the two countries. The foreign ministers of the GCC met the UK Minister of State for the Middle East and Africa, Tobias Elwood, to prepare for the meeting of British Prime Minister Theresa May with the GCC leaders, which will take place tomorrow in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Bahrain's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, noted that the meeting reflects the desire to further bolster cooperation in all fields and enhance the pivotal role played by the two sides on regional and international levels. For his part, Elwood praised the development of the GCC countries, particularly in the fields of economics and human resources. The meeting discussed topics on the GCC leaders and the British Prime Minister's agendas, and views were exchanged regarding affairs of common concern. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputised his advisor, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the World Islamic Banking Conference, sponsored by the Central Bank of Bahrain and attended by over 1,300 leaders of Islamic finance institutions. Sheikh Salman welcomed the Kingdom's hosting of the conference, stating that it reflects its interest in Islamic banking for its increasing importance in the banking system in the Kingdom. The Prime Minister's advisor affirmed the government's keenness to provide all the facilities required for improving the Islamic banking sector in the Kingdom, so as to enhance its role and effect on national economic development. He noted that the Kingdom enacted modern laws and legislation which are continually reviewed to organise the work of the sector. Sheikh Salman asserted that the finance and banking sector is one of the main pillars of the national economy and that the Kingdom has succeeded in establishing developed finance and banking system principles that make it one of the most prominent financial and banking centres in the region. He stated that the Kingdom is the Islamic banking hub in the region gaining the trust of specialised regional and international financial and banking institutions. He also hailed the distinguished competencies of the Kingdom in the finance and banking sector, expressing thanks to the organisers and participants of the conference and wishing them success.